traditional buy to let as we know it, uh, which is buying a single let property and renting it out for a rental return, good rental return, should I say, are we seeing the end of this? Is the next three, five years, maybe 10, not sure how long, going to represent the end of an era of buy to let, single let investment properties? So watch this video and I'll explain to you why I think this is, might be happening and what to do about it. So I'm Harvey, I'm a remote property investor. Uh, that means I live in the South and I invest in the North. And the reason I invest in the North and I am a remote property investor is because I like the traditional buy to let method there's loads of talk around is buy to let dead i remember a few years ago when section 24 come around and a few of these other things uh, uh there was talk about is buy to let dead buy to let is pretty dead in the south this is why i remote property invest and what do i mean by being dead i mean you're gonna get sub four percent yields on your property and that's yield that's not return on capital you the ability to refinance the bit properties so the ability to buy refurbish refinance is pretty dead. So even if you find a deal in, in London or around London in the south mainly, not everywhere, there's always little pockets, but if you find these deals that you can buy and add enough significant enough value to it, after time, the stress test of the of the rental income doesn't allow you to then get that revaluation and buy refurbish remortgage. Also, the returns are like four percent, and you get a better return on just a tracker fund and with less hassle. So the capital growth is slowed down. So in the south, contrary to popular belief, capital growth in London last year after all this hot market was only four percent. It was higher in the north east. You know, like like wow, it's higher than London was in this last year when we're in a hot property market. London's been plowed for since 2016. So the reason London has been plowed since 2016 is because the yields have been squeezed out. The capital growth is slowly reducing the stamp duty is really really ridiculously high the taxes are high the uh section 24 tax is really high so all these factors have squeezed it out for traditional buy to let property still works in the south by the way but you need to be more creative through a more of an advanced strategies like service accommodation hmos commercial conversions developments but then strategies like um, they're more advanced and they take more money, more skill, more experience uh, and more network and knowledge to be able to deliver these. So they're not for everybody, but also even if you've got the knowledge, skill, money or access to funds, they're much more difficult. So some people, myself included, are, they're not my favoured way of buying. I still like single let traditional properties. I find that's the foundation of your uh, portfolio. They're the most longest term tenants. They're the most hassle free form of property investing in. No, it is pretty much out there of all the strategies, unless you're just doing on these guaranteed rents to the social housing. So why am I saying this might be the last chance we've got of this over the next coming years? For the last five years, the top growing uh, capital growth areas in the UK have been Manchester and Liverpool and in the Northwest. So the government have really stimulated the market and the government's got to move to make the level, like, level up the playing field is the exact terminology they used. So what they're trying to do is make it so the North has got employment. So they had this powerhouse of the North deal. They also had loads of other things that happened in the meantime, like with the extra stamp duty and the section 24 and uh, and, the, and the yields compressing in, in London that made London much more unattractive. London will always get an attraction because it's a world heritage city. So you're gonna get some level of degree of people invest there for a trophy, but as an investment vehicle, it no longer works on straightforward buy to let properties. Hence why it's really slowed down in London. The other reason it's really slowed down in London is the price per earnings ratio. This is the exciting thing about the stuff in the North. So at the moment in the North, the price per earnings ratio is in line with what people earn. Plus there's employers turning up in these areas. So they're, they're turning up all across the North. The government's just announced they're going to Darlington in, in the northeast, my, my location. They're going to Leeds, you know. There is investment and employment turning up in all these areas. And this is what makes it exciting. And the thing is, if you rewind back to when the UK was the leading world power and in the Industrial Revolution times, the wealth distribution across the UK was equal. It was even. So what happened with this even distribution? We had the trains and the combustion engine all get developed in Darlington and around Hartlepool. 
Apparently, I'm not sure, I've tried looking this up, but apparently Hartlepool created, has created more millionaires in the UK than any other city, including London. But th then you had Liverpool with all the textiles and the docks there, and there was loads of industry in the UK. So we was the industry leaders. And then we lost that mantle to America. And then all the textiles, all the development, America took over with the tech and with the industrial revolution period, and it all shipped, shifted from us. We had the steel, the coal, and all that went, and the North got desolated. And then London was a business hub, so the only real attraction for employment in the UK was London, because it was a business hub. And back then, the reason London was the main attractive, because everybody wanted the prestige London office. But bear in mind, that again, the price per earnings ratio of the wages what people was paying people back then, so say if you had the London office, office in the 1970s and the 1980s, in the late 1970s, early 1980s, the average price for a property in London was £15,000, and the wage was £6,000, so it was only three times their earnings. So people in London, was getting paid this wage and it was in line with what they could afford for the houses. This spread of this, like of the price per earnings ratio, is now up to nine, 18 times the average wage is the price of the property in London. So, and the, and the average home owner, the most of the homeowners are unencumbered and they're all baby boomer ages. So they bought their prior houses when it was affordable to their wages and their equity growth has allowed, most of the sales it done from people selling houses that they don't own a mortgage on. And the reason they don't own a mortgage on it is they bought it 30 years ago when it was only three times their, 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 their yearly uh, salary. So all these factors have really slowed London down. But these factors are coming into the north. As I said, if you rewind beyond this little period to the Industrial Revolution times, it was equally distributed. That's why when you go to Liverpool, you go to Manchester, you go to Stockton on Tees and Middlesbrough, the architecture, the Victorian architecture, is absolutely beautiful because that's when money was there, when the steel factories were there, when the combustion engine was there, when we was really world leaders. And then when that left and come to London, that went. But as I said, in the 1970s and the 1980s, the big thing that happened was you had to have the London office because that's prestige and that's when you had to walk into offices to do business. You didn't even have a fax machine back then, maybe a phone call, but you walked in, you done a lot of businesses got done in meetings and walking in, so you wanted that prestige off office. The big game changer alongside the government trying to even this up is the fact that people do business virtually today. Like the, the playing field's flat. The world is like flat now because of the, the internet and the global reach. So people like these lots of these businesses are realizing we don't need this London office. Like in, loads of services are services, so insurance providers and all these different services are like, we don't need people to walk in for the footfall, so it's not like going down Oxford Street and popping into Selfridges, they don't need that footfall to do their business. So the, the thing is, do we get a prop business, uh, uh, a central London office for £25 million or £40 million, or do we get one central Manchester for £2 million, or do we get one central uh, Newcastle for half a million pound. The back end result of what they can sell for is exactly the same. They can still sell the product at the back end and people don't need to walk into this prestige location anymore. So this is a big thing shift for the way businesses are operating, especially now with a lot more doing homework in and, and stuff like that. But the more people are turning up in the north, more employees are turning up north, the more it is even it up. But the thing is, the price per earning ratio in the north, like, in, like, like London, they earn about £760 a week on average, and in the northwest, where it's been the best growing location for the last five years since all this infrastructure has been going in with the power of the north and employers, they earn about £560 a week, the average wage. Average, you could pick up properties in the northwest still for 100 k under 100 k but in London, half a million. So, yeah, it shows you the, 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 the quality of life, the, the affordability, the houses they could get, really, really pushes in. But then mixed with this last budget and the 5% deposits on second-hand homes is really going to heat the north up even more. Last year, the northwest grew more than London. Let me repeat that. The, the north east sorry and the northwest but the northeast which hasn't grown since the last recession it grew more than london Savile's predictions of the capital like capital growth over the next five years because of this after this budget was the north the uh, was it the northwest at the top uh it's all the northern places even wales and the northwest was above london and the southeast and everywhere in the south all the bottom five was all the, the, the all southern places and london was very much at the bottom don't get me wrong they predicted uh i think uh, something like 12 percent growth over the next five years in london if you're an existing owner of properties that's fantastic but getting into the market as a buy to let investor that's not good you know getting four percent returns on your capital is not good in the north even if you didn't do the buy refurbish remortgage you can still pick up a house for 70k 
and renting it out for 550, 600 pound a month. The return on capital, even if you didn't refinance your money, is in the double figures. It's phenomenal, you know? So this for me is the last opportunity to be buying these properties in these areas like over the next five to 10 years. Am I 100% correct? I don't know. Disclaimer here, I don't know for certain, but the way it's looking, because of the earnings, because of the employments coming to these areas, this is gonna, this is growing in line with the earnings as well. So and there's more foreign investment coming into these areas because they're looking for the yields now and the returns. So they're getting more and more developed. And, so my prediction over the next five, maybe 10 years, might even be as short as three years, is that the, it's gonna be your last opportunity to, how many of you could, would love to jump in the time machine and buy a property? I met a guy on a networking event, he bought, he, he bought, because back then as well, you had the back-to-back -back mortgages, he ended up buying 70 properties, all around 70 to 90 grand in uh, in Canary Wharf when they first built it, it was, and, and I was trying to revamp it. How many of you would like to go on a time machine and buy these properties in London? The average property in 1996 in London was 79,000 pound. But as I said, the big difference was the average wage was 22,000 pound. So it was only, it was less than four times multiplier of the average wage. So it was still affordable. This is the biggest shift in 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 this whole situation is the affordability for people to buy homes and the baby boomers baby boomers it, it, it's 70 in 2016 they're slowly downsizing and it's unfortunately slowly passing away baby boomers had 2.4 kids so they're not even passing it down to one kid they're diluting it down to the 2.4 kids who's spreading it out and, and they, a lot of people spend that money kids when they get their hair and so don't just put it all down on their home they spend it so yeah I can see fantastic and it's only a prediction i don't know for certain and nobody go out and bet your ha house is on this but even if they don't grow there still is fantastic returns in the north and i've been saying this for years now and and i've been saying about the price per earnings ratio savile's prediction with the reason they predicted all the north to be higher is because of affordability is in, in line with the ratio of the earnings and it, it, for me don't take a real genius to work this out you know like if you if you've got five times multiplier of your of your income for the, what you can mortgage and the average property is 18 times more don't know, like somebody work this out for me and tell me a way. Oh, everybody's got some nostalgic effect in the South because what we experienced over a 20 year period was massive growth and it's emotionally made people high off that. Previous to that, the growth in London was always good, so is it across the UK, but it was much more evenly distributed across history than it was in that 20 year period. The other factors you had into that 20 year period was banks was throwing money out the door. They've never lent like that before in history. You could get back to back loans on buy to lets. You could get, you could get, uh, 130% mortgages on your own home day one yeah I want to do a bit of renovation in there lend more than the home was worth it was crazy times and the banks unless the banks start lending above the value of property uh, or, or or the wages inflation pushes the wages up really really quickly hack or they do something as I said overseas investors are disencouraged to come into London apart from the ones who want a trophy but the ones that want really good returns are not in London anymore they're in the north now so yeah there's loads and loads of factors that's rec like recipe towards this will the north grow would it be the last it might not grow it might not be the last chance but even if it don't grow the returns on your capital is fantastic and the biggest game changer for being doing this so if you live in one of these areas get out and get buying in these areas if you don't the biggest game changer is the internet very similar look stop London being the main central hub. The internet now can make you network. One of the biggest powers in your property business is your network. I so say your network is your net worth. Sounds cheesy, sounds cliche, but it's 100% true. You can network rapidly online today. You can find builders online. You can connect with people online. Come in groups like this and you will just find people. If you want to go to Liverpool, put your, put your hand up. Keep on doing videos about Liverpool and in Liverpool in groups like this and there'll be other people in Liverpool connect with you, investors, and you'll build out your network. This is how I've done it in the North myself i met somebody from the area which was chance but all my network beyond that point has been built out because i kept on doing videos in groups like this about my location and people held their hand up and i've got a fantastic network in the area just from me documenting what i was buying what i was doing so it's more than achievable it's not as ideal as doing it locally but is it as ideal as having four percent returns and having to put 100k in a property that you can't even refinance the money out and lock that money in no even when you don't refinance money out and buy them at market value you only have you could find 15 K for deposits up there and get a 15% return on your capital. It's, it's night and day for me. It's just taking that mindset away from taking yourself out of your comfort zone and just going online. It's not as ideal as in person, as I said, 100%. 
but it's more than doable today, especially building your network. So there's my predictions. What's your thoughts around this, guys? Do you think I feel we could possibly have the last opportunity for buying single-let, traditional buy-to-let properties? There will always be business in property, but you'll have to then develop up into a bigger stage. If you're getting started, or even if you're not started, you just want to bolster up your foundation of single-let properties, now is a fantastic time to be buying in the north. If you live there, fantastic. If you don't, then think about remote investing. Any questions around that, I've been doing this for nearly a decade now, remote investing. Any questions you've got around that, happy to answer the softwares and the different methods I do for that. But remember, if you don't evolve your ideas, you're never going to live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms, and have a great day, everyone. Awesome.